Welcome back to The Stars Made Me Do It. You've got Sierra and Mimi here. Hello. And it's Gemini season. Yes. How are you feeling about Gemini season this year? <laughs> um, well, I've got crazy allergies right now. Okay. And I'm not used to having crazy <laughs> allergies. So that's that's all I can think about during this Gemini season. I'm like, pollen. But that was the I, most. Now I understand, so. <laughs> like having recorded the 200th episode, I understand how people are like, this is a really good podcast to listen to for my ADHD. Because I was literally like, how do you feel about Gemini season? You're like, mm, I have allergies right now. <laughs> I so. mean, that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> We did in true Gemini fashion. We we are very method about the podcast and we spent a half hour just chattering in very Gemini fashion. So we are embodying Gemini we energy do. for this episode. We totally are. Yes. And I mean, <laughs> in Gemini fashion, I'm like, I've been talking so much before I have to record myself talking. So now that I'm recording myself talking, my allergies are like, eh, and it's like, man, <laughs> I spent so much energy. <laughs> I know my Gemini Mars is so here for that. Yep. But <laughs> I will say I I like I mean I love Gemini energy. Gemini season for me I think is just always a little bit chaotic as mm-hmm. is Gemini energy in general because thinking of most of my I don't know, most of my life and definitely like my early adult life, it was always the end of the school year for me. Because I always ended school earlier. I don't know, living in Maryland, Mm. I always started school earlier and ended school earlier. And then in Virginia, as a teacher, we always ended school like right around like the the 10th of June. Like that was the latest we would go was the 10th of June. So I feel like this chaotic, oh my gosh, we're moving into summer. Yeah. 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 And just, I mean... The last couple like weeks, but definitely like, the last two weeks of school are pure chaos in Absolutely. Gemini fashion. Yeah, and, there's like I'm and that's not what I consuming associate any with. more information, or I've taken all the tests, or you know, I'm just like I'm ready to go. Like I, I need to be stimulated. It's sunny Everybody's outside. I want to go bored. have fun. Yeah, everyone's bored and just yes, doing what they need to do because that's what's said to do, but it does not vibe with with Gemini's of the world. Yeah, I so I kind of feel like Gemini season to me. Love it. I love Gemini energy. I always seem to be doing some sort of like, you know, this is the first trip of the year. This is I guess this is past Sierra. I'm trying to think of present Sierra. I mean, my my wedding anniversary is in Gemini season and we are going on a trip this year, this Gemini season. And we do tend to do something around that time. So it is travel-y in a way, mm-hmm. which even though we think of that with Sag energy, you know, it's on the that axis. It's more close, mm. like shorter distance travel. And I'm always here to meet people and chat with people and just have that boredom quenched you know yeah. <laughs> like have something be stimulated to, uh, to do yeah exactly be interested yeah. but what about you inspired well as we know I have quite the journey with Gemini energy and I feel like every year like now this is probably my third season that I've been on this podcast and we've talked about Gemini season and I'd be really interested to hear how my mindset has shifted about it how it's evolved exactly yeah. how it's evolved <laughs> because um you know I just as a heavy like earth and water placement person Gemini has always been a little bit difficult for me like if I handle chaos it's in my Aries way and so there's a little bit of a connection to Gemini there and I have been connecting to my Aries energy more lately so I can see why as I evolve my Aries kind of traits I also gain comfort with Gemini energy Um, I also have three progressed planets in Gemini so my Venus my progressed Venus my progressed moon and Mercury are all in Gemini too so I do see like this evolution of understanding and embodying Gemini energy more and and appreciating it in others too Um, because I think yeah what I struggle the most with Gemini is um probably just the like nonstop chatter because I feel like I'm not allowed to um to insert and like have conversation it feels more like a monologue at me but what I found from a lot of Gemini placements is like no interrupt me because I'll just keep talking but if you interrupt me it's a conversation and I'm happy (laughs) to have a conversation you know so that's probably my biggest struggle with Gemini energy um but what I love about Gemini energy is curiosity and openness to new information and asking a lot of questions and purely for the sake of knowing 
unimportant stuff. Like on a recent Patreon episode, we, I, you were, you discussed your laundry and I was like, I need to know everything about your laundry routine. And that was very Gemini energy, you know, like what a yes. sudden <laughs> and unimportant curiosity that Gemini has. And you yes. never know where that information is going to take you. Exactly. And <laughs> my Gemini Mars just lives that way. Like, <laughs> wait, this is interesting to me. Let me ask another question yeah. about it. Which and I love then being we've asked derailed. questions because I, I'm not one to insert like information about myself without a prompt, you know, for the most part. Um, okay. Where Gemini will be like, mm, well, nobody's talking, so I'm just going to share absolutely everything <laughs> there is to share until somebody, you know, is interested in one thing I say and we create a conversation from that, you know. Exactly. No. I do know. <laughs> I, know. I ask as though. <laughs> do you relate to that at all? <laughs> but you know, oh. that's something that's really cool that you and I have discussed too with like my Gemini energy in comparison to your Pisces energy mm. because those are like squared signs yeah. and you've got Pisces Mars and I've got Gemini Mars and like for you, no topic is too deep yeah. or too like broad to get into and for me, like no topic is too little and yeah. detailed. Like you're like, I know this doesn't seem important and I'm like, no, but this is a tiny little detail and it is something. It is important yeah. and I feel like that's the Gemini and I curiosity of I don't care if it's big or little it's sparking a curiosity energy I am now yeah. I am now invested which actually that I mean that's off topic of the Venus and Gemini episode that we are doing today I don't know if we fully introduce that but I do see that square between us because they're like because I'm like I want to dive into the deepest things and you want to dive into you know every little detail we kind of have to find a middle ground or on certain days, I'll be more open to the little things or on certain days, you'll be more open to the the more yes. intense conversations or more deep conversations. And so it's kind of fun to navigate that square together and be like, oh, today is just a square day. Like we're not going to meet in the same place or maybe we'll meet in the middle rather yeah. than meeting at the other one's spot. And that's what I think is very cool for. OK, we we've said it before. There, Gemini gets a bad rep for so many things. It's like, oh, you're yeah. two-faced. Oh, this is like, you know, like the most whatever sign of the Zodiac, what, the like most hated yeah. sign of the Zodiac. And yeah. It's like, stop that. Like, you just can't, yeah. you can't just place that on one sign. But I do think that for many of the reasons that you just mentioned, like maybe it is the misunderstanding of the Gemini energy. All this person does mm -hmm. is talk. And it's like, yeah, but they want to talk with you too. But if nobody's yeah. filling that void, they'll just keep going. They'll just keep going with that. Yeah, you just have to know that they won't be offended by being interrupted. Yes, For exactly. the most part. I mean, communicate that to them. Be like, hey, I noticed that you are a, a long-winded speaker. Are you offended if I interrupt you? And most likely the Gemini, especially a Mercury and Gemini, would be like, no, like interrupt. Like I'm, because they're willing to change the flow of the conversation yes. at the drop of a pin. You know, it's not that they're committed to discussing the thing that they are saying. They are willing to, if you throw in a new prompt, to go in that direction. That's the mutability of Gemini. Yes. And the curiosity of it is like, yes, I've been talking about all of my topics, but I could very, very quickly be interested in all of your topics. So let's mm -hmm. let's just like, yeah, bring it in, throw throw it in there. We can we can totally yeah. shift. And I really like that about you know, you can see that flaky surface that people bring up for Gemini mm -hmm. when it comes to the areas and topics of conversation because it's just easy and readily available. It's easy to scoop something off the surface than it is to dive deep. But that doesn't mean that Gemini is against talking about other conversations and other topics. Mm -hmm. It's more like they're going to just keep it flowing in that in that surface level. And I think that yeah. there's a beautiful time and place for that and that they're very open to any and all conversations in general because it's more information yeah. to collect. Exactly. And we're talking a lot about communication, which sounds more Mercury, but that's because Gemini is a Mercury ruled sign. So we will be discussing Venus and Gemini. But we, if you're new here, we like to open by discussing just the general kind of stereotypical energy of Gemini as it is. So let's get into Venus and Gemini. Before we do that, make sure you go follow us on Instagram at the stars made me podcast for any new information questionnaires. We do questionnaires for the Venus signs and soon for the next season, we'll have a new questionnaire. And then also go 
check us out on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the stars made me do it. We have a little community there. We do uh, monthly episodes on the forecast of the coming month. We have daily astrological insights for what's going on in the sky right now and how that's affecting us. And uh, we also do monthly meetups. And we also have a Discord, which is very Gemini friendly. So if you are yep. a, a Gemini placement listening to this and you want to have a community to chat with, that is a great place to find us and chat with yeah, us pretty regularly. Yep. So yeah, check that out. Yep. And like we said, it's it's Venus Gemini energy today. And mm. just the recap of Venus, it's, it's all about your values, your relationships, finances and you know you're giving and receiving of love and that inner balance and the recap of gemini being air sign a mutable sign and an external energy so it Mm -hmm. is sometimes considered that masculine versus that feminine energy but it externalizes everything and so Mm -hmm. we have that airy brain power all the intellectual stimulation external stimulation it's mutable it's the last sign of spring so it is very much getting ready for the next season it could be spring it could be getting ready for summer and if you think about it elementally you think about this mutable energy that's kind of all over the place and then you throw air in the mix like this is the most mutable of the mutable in my opinion in the same way that like yeah Taurus feels like the most earth the of most the fixed. earth. Yeah. Like, or yes, the most fixed of the fixed because it's fixed earth. This is like airy, yeah. mutable. It is so airy. And yeah. Mutable. I agree. I think I would say I would throw Pisces in there too, though, because I think Pisces and both that air and water quality are very mutable to me. But I would, I would absolutely agree that Gemini is very very mutable out of all the mutables there's nothing tethering mutability and there's nothing tethering air you know yeah and that is why it's such an idea conversation communication community energy yeah because it has such a flow to it and we're applying everything that Mimi and I were just talking about the Gemini energy to Venus and Venus is all about relationships yeah the relationships yeah yeah, I mean, in the way that Gemini has is all about polarity, Venus is also about polarity. So I think that Venus and Gemini really brings out the more Libran qualities of Venus as opposed Ooh, to the Taurus yes. qualities. Um, because Gemini is in aversion to Taurus, whereas it's trine Libra, which is a lot of jargon, stay with me, it's more easily tapping into those very Libran aspects of Venus. So much more focused on the social aspect, the conversational aspect of Venus, the connectedness aspect to uh, like more interpersonal relationships as opposed to like embodiment that like the Taurus Venus side is. Absolutely. I love that because it is Venus like one of the signs ruling that being Libra and with that air understanding between them, it definitely does, you know, play with more of those Libra Venus values and, you know, and just thinking about values in general, just when it comes to Venus and Gemini thoughts, I would think that anyone with Gemini Venus really just values being able to have a conversation with somebody like Mm -hmm. one of my very best friends is a venus in gemini and we literally just like when we're talking to each other we're like i just really want a bed chat right now because that's what we would call it when we were little like we would just (laughs) sit on one of our beds for like hours and just talk that was that was like our activity and it's like oh man i really wish we could have a bed chat and that's it that's i mean my gemini mars and her gemini venus would that was that's all we needed was to just hang out and talk because you value your Venus sign is about your values and and Gemini is all about communication but it's about that it's a it's a very social sign too and it doesn't mean you have to be an extrovert but like you can't you know get only new ideas from your own head like that can be from reading consuming information but maybe a Venus and Gemini could okay you're right but I mean like it's maybe less fun. It needs to be inspired yeah. or entertained. Exactly. Stimulated. I mean, that's really what it always comes down to. Yeah. It's less It's less stimulating to have that conversation in your own brain than it is to have, you know, other things come in. And I, I don't think Gemini energy is afraid of a challenge because they are just interested in getting that stimulation and challenge is stimulating, you know? 
Yeah, and they don't see, like, because Gemini is an air sign, it's quite impersonal as well, which can be a very positive thing, where they're not holding on to grudges in the way that a Venus and Taurus could, <clears throat> speaking from experience. <laughs> like, they are, you know, words are equally so important and so fleeting to them. Yes, yes. And it's, it, again, it's that air. It's that immutability. It's just a constant motion. It's a constant, yeah. you know, this way, then that way. So we're not super, like you said, like holding on to any sort of grudge or any sort of idea too long term because yeah. we've got more things that we could be interested in. Yeah. And I want to go back to what you said about it getting a bad rep because um, Venus in Gemini, similar to Venus in Sag, is known as one of the placements for like infidelity because they get bored quickly. Um, yes. So that is something that I do think Venus and Gemini placements need to work through when it comes to kind of just like maturing and growing up and figuring out what they want from a relationship and recognizing that they do get bored and finding a partner who does stimulate them that they are able to have good conversation with. Because I think once that they once they do find that partnership and commitment that Venus does so want, as long as that basic value of stimulation and fun yeah. is honored, that Venus and Gemini can be committed. So, you know, like I think so many Venus and Gemini, maybe like Astro Babies, read up on it and they go, oh, I guess I'm just supposed to be alone forever and just be a cheater all my life. And it's like, that's absolutely not the case. But you are meant to grapple or deal with and do the work on why maybe you run away when things get a little hard or run away when things get a little bit quiet or boring, which in an intimate or domestic setting, relationships do quiet down unless yeah. it's a Venus and Gemini <laughs> or Venus and Sag and they don't want that quiet and there's that mutual understanding in that partnership I love everything you just said and I love the word grapple <laughs> and now I'm like I need to use this it's word a good one, right? more yes <laughs> speaking of like <laughs> Gemini energy and words I'm like adding that to my list to use more oh often. yes yeah love minutia it. we used the other day and you we liked did. and then minutia grapple and grapple mm. yeah mm. grapple okay I'm gonna stop but <laughs> minutia, anyways grappling minutia <laughs> band name oh Oh, it somehow sounds gross. I don't know why. It sounds kind of gropey. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Grappling uh, with minutia. Ooh, that sounds that better is somehow. the Gemini journey is grappling with all the, <gasps> all the little things, the little detail. Like they like details when it, there's no consequence or responsibility <laughs> yes. associated with them. They yeah. find it entertaining. But when it's like there's responsibility associated to to this uh, part of life, that Gemini, which is mutable and air, it's like, ah, oh, don't make, don't tether me down. Don't hold exactly. me back. Exactly. And everything that you just said about, you know, the whole idea of just being in a long-term relationship when things quiet down, I've got Venus and Sagittarius. Uh, that's the opposite mm -hmm. of Venus and Gemini. I so understand that. But I also really like the point that you brought up about when people just start researching things and that's the first thing they see. Like, oh my gosh, like he's got Venus and Gemini. That means he's a cheater. Like let's, let's just shut that down and let's try to understand yeah. why that became a statement that gets thrown out there a lot. Mm. It's like this person – needs constant stimulation when it comes to relationship you know topics because it is venus and it's gemini which needs constant stimulation and can get bored easily but you also need to look at like the whole chart as somebody who has venus and sag and has only ever been in like committed relationship with a person who has so much gemini energy and so much aquarius energy where it's like mm. we so neither of us want to be bored and both of us value freedom and independence. And yeah. so it just like, you have to look at your whole chart too, because the amount of like Capricorn that I've got doesn't want like just the flighty parts of the typical, you know, Venus and Sag or Gemini energy. Like it wants that grounded commitment. And so you need to mm -hmm. also look at your whole chart or their whole chart to see what else is coming into play there. But I think, Mm -hmm. That that is why, you know, we can maybe understand why we often see, oh, yes, Venus and Gemini are like not, what's the word? Oh, my God. What's the word in English? Uh, it's not. Is it? Sierra fidel? lives in France, in case you didn't know. Fidelity? F fidelity? Inf unfaithful? Unfaithful. Yes. Being faithful. Thank you. I always struggle with yes, this. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like infidel in English. And when you translate it, I'm like, yes. that is not the word. Do not use that word. Nope, that is okay. Not. When it comes to being faithful, <laughs> thank you. Um, when mm-hmm. it comes to being faithful, it's so like they they absolutely have the ability to be faithful. It's if that's yeah. what they want. It's also if that's what they want. And, you know, Venus and Gemini wants to have fun, wants their relationships, not just like in a romantic relationship, but Venus's relationships in general and things that you value mm-hmm. in your relationships. They want to have stimulating conversation. They are not going to be in any sort of long-term relationships, friend or romantic with anybody who's not like poking at their brain in a way that they Mm -hmm. like love and that lights them up so I'm thinking about if there's someone listening who's like oh but I just like don't have that many topics to talk about and how when my dog gets really restless at night I just give her like a brain puzzle or I'll give her a little Kong with peanut butter (laughs) and I'm like if your Venus and Gemini partner is getting restless and they like a puzzle just give them a new puzzle you know and then let them stimulate themselves (laughs) and you can be there and hang out and and listen to them talk and jump in whenever you have that because you know Venus and Gemini can host the conversation you know I think they appreciate when their partner can also you know bring their or hold their weight in that conversation as well um but yeah I mean give them a little a little puzzle of some sort yeah I think that there has to be something with Venus and Gemini where all of the options out there, like I, they really like options too because they don't mm-hmm. want to just be stuck in one rut. So I don't think that Venus and Gemini typically is going to be a person who meets one person and decides this is my person and done. I think they are a sign that needs to explore and learn what it is yeah. that, you know, Like, hey, I liked this about this person and it did work for now, but it's not working anymore. Okay, I'm going to date this person. Yes. Which does bring us to the like the whole multifaceted nature of Gemini and how they are quick to change their mind. And and they might seem very committed to something in one moment, but that commitment has to show itself over a fair amount of time. And a Venus and Gemini placement or natal person needs to find someone who is okay with change and with that multifaceted nature that they do contradict themselves quite often that they can be one thing and they can be the totally opposite thing also you know that's the whole point of I think that's where Gemini really came to be this like two-faced in quotes sign because it can be one thing and the exact opposite as well exactly that that is what Gemini does and that is not a fault that is a reality <laughs> like that is what they mm-hmm. do is they they are the twins they are both sides of it and Definitely listen mm-hmm. to our back to basics back to basics archetype episode if you want just some concentrated Gemini information. But mm-hmm. they do bring two truths at the same time and that's something that can be hard for people who don't understand that energy or vibe in that same way. As somebody who has, you know, I mean, sun and rising and Venus and Mercury and Sagittarius. Heck yes, bring me a Venus and Gemini person as like a friend or, you know, like partner or whatever. Like I am here and Gemini Mars, like I am here for that conversation. You got bored. I got bored too. Go do something by yourself. I'll do something by myself. We'll do something (laughs) together. Like I am so here for that. But then you have, you know, on the opposite side of things, like somebody who is really fixed, really grounded, really committed and really not like valuing changeability in the same way that's not going to vibe in in that way you know it's not going to vibe in the same way that it would for someone like me and so that's just the thing to know about any sign but especially with Gemini energy that I think so many people misunderstand is that Mm -hmm. they need to have constant stimulation and boredom is a punishment and so if they realize they're bored you know they need to switch to something new but they should do something about it They should also keep in mind that they have the power to change up that stimulation themselves because I think Mm -hmm. that that's one thing that as we grow and evolve into our signs and understand our signs better, if you have Venus in Gemini and you are seeking a long-term partnership and you do feel like you get very bored from one person even though it did work out well, like, you know, think about what can I do as like an individual? Like, cause Venus rules creativity too, you know? So what can I do to keep myself stimulated? Myself stimulated. Because, you know, hey, I value this person and they do, you know, meet most of my criteria, but I'm bored now. And it's like, okay, well, let's find something else that can fill that, you know, need 
and then see yeah. how it goes from there. I think that's definitely a test for Gemini, in, especially Venus and Gemini, is how to, um, because they are such seekers, like they're ever long seekers, and kind of similar to how Sagittarius is like, grass is always greener on the other side. Like, let me go see that grass. Let me go climb that hill and see what, it might be better over there. Similarly, I think that that's Gemini, but it's just triggered by more mental stimulation than like physical yes. experiences. So they, I think that is quite the challenge for Gemini to actually decide to commit to something. And then from that new place, find that new stimulation, like you said, and be a source of their own stimulation or uh, always, you know, if that's something that that Venus and Gemini needs, it's their responsibility to bring that in their partnership as well and to teach their partner how to properly s stimulate them and keep them entertained. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's that part of astrology where it's like you can use your placements as reasons but not excuses you know like you mm -hmm. you don't uh, excuse certain behaviors that are not okay and what you know whatever way but you can understand yeah. the source of them and then take the power back from that explain don't excuse Ooh, yes Love it. So I want to talk a little briefly about just like the inner balance aspect of Venus and also the financial aspect of Venus and then also the aesthetics. So we've got some great ref ref references, references coming up as well and questionnaire data and also some celebrities. But a couple more points I wanted to talk about the inner balance aspect of Venus, like how you find your own inner serenity. I feel like because Gemini is so in aversion to like the serenity aspect of like more of the Taurus Venus, there's always sort of this buzz in the Venus in Gemini. You know, oh, there's yeah. always that inner balance is always kind of vibrating at some sort of frequency. There's always some sort of um, movement going on. So that inner balance for Venus and Gemini is going to look so different from like a Venus in Taurus or a Venus in Pisces. It's more of they're finding their balance by continuing to move and exerting their energy it's a very physical placement it is it's very I'm just thinking of like my my husband who's a Gemini moon Gemini Mars like has a full third house like he really does find peace and you know calm mm -hmm. when he is moving his body because it gives his mind a rest and while that is not necessarily Venus here I just the Gemini like energy transfers over of you know the mind is constantly moving with any Gemini placement it's just it's such a mercurial energy that giving it space to do so I think that Gemini, while it seeks, oh my God, while it seeks stimulation, it also can be overstimulated in that way. Yeah. And so sometimes finding whatever your activity is, maybe it's yoga, maybe it is, you know, something that is very active, but whatever that is, where it allows that buzz to be the main focus as opposed to an overstimulated mm. focus, I think is really great for that Venus in Gemini. Yeah, beautifully put. Um, talking about their finances, this is someone who might be somewhat uh, flimsy, flaky, and impulsive with their money, or uh, might have a lot of different kinds of investments, or you know, they they put their money in a lot of different pots. Is the mind that's coming is the word that's coming to mind? Yeah. But I don't know if that's accurate. But they have their fingers in a lot of pies. Yeah, exactly. Because it would be boring if it was just one. <laughs> yeah I like the risk <laughs> yeah yeah and it's not even thinking about risk it's like this was interesting to me right now and seems fruitful yeah there we go yeah 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 and then aesthetically, I love the aesthetic of a Venus and Gemini, like fashion wise, this is such androgynous fashion, Gemini being literal polar, like polarity, the biggest polarity we can think of in gender, if we're looking at the binary is masculine and feminine. And so there is this blend of both of them and trying to see or trying to find how both aspects of this like of opposite things can be represented in a physical or aesthetic way so that's I think why Venus and Gemini will get such a such a cool multifaceted layered deeper expression of themselves through fashion yeah I really like that there's 
It's different from Aquarius Venus. Aquarius Venus being that mm-hmm. air Venus as well is almost like pushing boundaries and being completely trend setting and unconventional because they're they're not trying to follow any sort of trend whereas they're like Gemini to me is I want to try out every trend and I'm going to yeah. mix and match them and it then becomes yeah. my own but it's also different tomorrow. You know, like it Yeah. It's working for me right oh, now, yeah. and this You're is so interesting right, to me like, right this now. This is such a trendy placement. Like, this is the TikTok fashion placement. Oh, I love that. <laughs> the bucket hats and and platform sandals. Yeah, all of it. Just exploring and experimenting, and it's very modern, like this Venus and Gemini energy. And it's modern in a way of, like, I, I could see them bringing back something that was so popular like decades ago and mixing it with like yeah yeah, like jelly sandals or whatever and it's like are you wearing an Audrey Hepburn (laughs) dress with jelly sandals you know that was decades ago (laughs) yeah no 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 I'm thinking of something that's like yeah let's say classic classic or maybe not even decades ago but a classic traditional fashion that then you slapped something that was trendy like Mm -hmm. an 80s vibe or or a 90s vibe whatever you know and then it's something new because that's what was interesting to me right now and I'm wondering if I'm just like maybe associating a little bit of uh third co-host Martha because she's got Leo placements and a Gemini rising but I'm just wondering if with Gemini there's so much just with so much multifaceted and like own uh what not contradiction but yes contradiction but like hyper what's the word that I'm looking for I don't know but they're self-contradicting hip hypocritical like hypocritical yeah. statements within the self not saying that they're hypocrites but like there are just these more contradicting statements about who you are as a Gemini <laughs> yeah. because you can be one thing but you could be the other and I wonder if for those that do express themselves through clothing if that's why they can tend to be quite like grungy or punky too you know like a little more aggressive and expressing their um uncertainty of self i can so see a gemini venus and i'm just thinking of my husband's gemini placements like in the ways in which they come out here but like i could see a gemini venus being like declaring that they absolutely hate the color green and then they like come out <laughs> like they just bought this really beautiful like bright ass green purse and everyone's like I thought you hate yep. green you're like no but this green is great and you're like okay well yep. I mean you let us all know for years how much you hated green but I'm glad that this one is working yeah. for you and it literally is working for them and that is that yeah. contradictory kind of hypocritical energy that you're going for but both of those things are true at the same time that Gemini hates green and loves that purse yeah their thoughts and and feelings and opinions can be quite fleeting. Not yeah. to invalidate their feelings, but just that can be the case. Yeah, absolutely. Well, shall we move on to our sources? Let's. Or our references, rather. So we are getting our typical references from Isabel M. Hickey in Astrology of Cosmic Science. And a lot of this is what we've already gone over. She says that Gemini Venus is light, airy, charming, and superficial. And so I think that we've gone over the light and airy and charming with that social energy and the Mm -hmm. superficial going along with what we said about surface, but how people associate superficial with a negative connotation and it doesn't have to be. Yeah. And then understands passion, but does not feel it too strongly. And that I thought was interesting because the understanding of passions, it brings me back to that mercurial like brain space but then maybe not feeling it too strongly because it's more like, oh, I understand that that's what this feeling is, but maybe not the same embodiment like the Taurus energy that you mentioned. It's more of that Libra airy. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. I think that they are very passionate, but maybe just not committed, you know, like they're passionate, Mm. but not determined. They're not committed to their passion. But in the moment, they're like, oh, yeah, this is my new favorite thing. I'm changing my life around this piece of information two minutes later they're like oh what was that I forgot yep (laughs) it's so real (laughs) so they're very passionate they just don't might not stick to their passions in any given moment without a tether it's like the passion went out there and landed on nothing and so we like because we're so Mm -hmm. airy and flowy it was so true in that moment but we're gonna find something else that was also gonna be true in that moment So we have great charm, wit, and expressiveness. Checks out. 
Yeah, that actually, we didn't even speak on, um, like, the youthfulness of Gemini. Oh, my God, They're so youthful. And I think that also, we kind of touched on it with the aesthetics of, like, being quite trendy and modern. Like, they're very tapped into the new, like, whatever's new. And so there is, like, this youthfulness and expressiveness that Gemini has. It is. It is very youthful. You're so right. And there is that, like, little kid part of us that was not self-conscious about what we were wearing. We were just like expressing what we want to <laughs> we wear. saying. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And that's the Gemini yeah. energy for sure. Yeah. So uh, we have emotions are sifted through the mind instead of through the feelings. And so, yes, but also this felt very moon-centered to me. Like emotions yeah, being sifted through the mind. I would put that as a Gemini moon more than a Gemini Venus, personally. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's an incorrect statement. I mean, not that Isabel Hick- Hick- uh, not that Isabel M. Hickey is like awaiting our opinions on her incredible insights, but I would agree that this is m- much more moon yeah centered. Like you said, and if and if you are a Gemini moon, go listen to our Gemini moon episode. We got that. We got that. Yeah. An entertaining companion, but not one to be taken too seriously. This. Love the entertaining companion piece and the not to be taken too seriously. I really would just encourage you to look at the rest of their chart because I'm thinking of like one of my best friends who is this Gemini Venus and is also a Gemini Mercury. And yes, like has the entertainment factor, but she's a cancer and has a Capricorn rising. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, there is a seriousness and like a heartfeltness too. So I think you really need to look at everything there. But yes, I would say Gemini Venus has entertainment value. (laughs) Yeah. And also, I mean, I when we look at it archetypically, like if we're not looking at the rest of the chart, the statement makes sense, like not to be yes. taken too seriously. They'll say words just to see how they land and, and to entertain. I think we give Leo so much of the entertaining qualities, but Gemini does too. It's sort of the clown, like the class clown energy, um, as well as Leo. So, you know, sometimes they just say things for the hope that it lands without yes. even meaning it. That is very true. And that I would definitely put on Gemini Mercury too. And so for Mm. like Gemini Venus, I think it's maybe goes along with that commitment factor where they did feel committed in that moment to that thing, to that Mm. project, to that creative, you know, expression, to that relationship. And it's no longer feeling that way. So we can't take it too seriously. Yeah. So then she continues to say that they need to learn constancy, which I'm like, constancy I was thinking consistency Mm. but constancy curious adding that to my (laughs) grapple yeah and then (laughs) uh hard for them to decide on one love when there are so many to choose from I mean yeah there's like we love options like Gemini loves options so yes how do I know that this is the one that's going to work for me when there's so many other things I haven't tried yet so that's what I was saying before about the maybe could be beneficial or just, you know, reality of needing to date many partners or like, you know, be yeah. be in an online dating world that that has a vast amount of different types of people. Or even like thinking about non- non-romantic relationships, having a vast, ver- like a variety of friends, a, an oh eclectic God, yeah. group of friends, like so many different types of people from different backgrounds with different interests. It's, yeah, just like, having variety yeah as somebody who has a gemini ruled seventh house over here can confirm that Mm -hmm. the need for all different types of people and like you know it it's to fuel all the different facets of gemini yeah i was just thinking that actually as we were recording that like this would be because we don't have a purely descendant episode this Venus series would be a good one for people to go and listen to. Like I have my Aquarius descendant. I should go listen to the Venus and Aquarius or pay attention to what Venus and Aquarius is like. Cause they kind of translate to one another. I like that a lot. Yeah. I'm not so much about finances and aesthetics, but just in the relationship aspect, which is the main one that we kind of focus on. Yeah. I can definitely relate to all of these Gemini qualities being like, yeah, I'm here for that. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. here for that with yeah. my, with my descendant in Gemini. That makes sense. Yeah. That checks out. So we also have often two important loves in the life, though not always at the same time. And that feels that that was super curious when I read that. And I like it because it does, you know, Gemini's the twins. It's the duality. It is this side and that side. And I like the idea of 
yeah, my Gemini Venus has this part and then has this part. It doesn't have to be at two times, but maybe in the same way that Gemini moons often have like two very different parenting styles Mm -hmm. that they grew up with. Like this could be like two very different, you know, like major relationships that they've experienced. You know, that's really interesting. It reminds me of a very old um, like astrology prediction technique where uh, the mutable signs always indicated duality like um any mutable sign so like if you had pisces or gemini on the fifth house that was a likely prediction for twins like because the Mm. fifth house rules children so to have a gemini venus or gemini seventh house would indicate two partners Mm -hmm. yeah and then very friendly delightful companion if you don't try to pin them down there we go they need to have that freedom it's a different type of freedom the sagittarius it's a but it's freedom nonetheless yeah and then (laughs) i like this strong relationship with kinsfolk i'm like where are you getting where are you getting that word from isabel like yeah what's that mean (laughs) well i just feel like literally means with close people like your kin yeah you know so strong relationship with close people community yeah it's a social sign it's community and also like the third house, which is, you know, associated with Gemini is about siblings. And I think that sometimes, mm. you know, Gemini energy, their their close people become like their their family in that way where, you know, oh, you're like my sister. Like I'm calling you up yeah. and my friends are like my, my family in that way, but not in a cancer family way. It feels like in a sibling, like I'm, yeah, I don't know, that type of kinsfolk way. Kinsfolk. Lovely. And then from Stephen Forrest, the book of air, the art of paying attention, just a couple cool quotes. Um, He always speaks in first person form. So it's speaking from the perspective of Venus and Gemini. I do my part in keeping a relationship interesting. I suggest travel. I read books and talk about what I have learned. I dynamite deadening intimate routines for the sheer joy of seeing something different. I ask questions. Oh, damn. I could so see that that Gemini energy being like, what if I just exploded it so that it's different? Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. <laughs> yeah, I'm so bored. <laughs> what if I just dropped a bomb? Yeah. And then this I thought was interesting. He just mentioned sensory exposure to beauty being important, but I would say more mental, mental. exposure to beauty. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. And then on the shadow side of Gemini or Venus and Gemini, he says, um, as something to work on, I will zealously monitor myself regarding my tendency to hide my heart behind words and elaborate rationalizations. Ooh, that is There is is something to be said about the fear of intimacy with this Gemini Sagittarius axis. They just, because they do prioritize fun and adventure, sometimes when real life hits, it can be kind of a fight or flight moment of is this Venus and Gemini going to face this hard moment or are they going to run away um, because it's not what they signed up for that really hits and can definitely be called out in some moments on that it is like when things get hard because it's so easy for that Gemini Sagittarius access to just peace out and find something new and interesting it's really easy to do that and sometimes we do really need to stick with it and move through something hard and I think that yeah just just the whole idea of in a relationship with something being hard like that's that's the nature of relationships and so that's part of you know the learning process with that access like you said of am I is this because I'm I'm supposed to find something else or is this because I need to work through this hard moment? And I think that Mm -hmm. both Gemini and Sagittarius, they have the class clown energy and making a joke out of their own pain or making a joke out of the situation, lightening the mood. And while most of the time that's like in many instances, that's very appreciated to have a lightened mood when things get heavy. Sometimes things are just heavy and need to be 
treated, you know, as such. And so I think that that is a With great, gravity. like, yeah, a great yeah. little ad- advice or just awareness that, yeah. yeah. I have this ability to be light and fun and changeable, but sometimes I might just need to sit with it and and share what I'm feeling or deal with the seriousness of what yeah. I'm experiencing. Yeah, not intellectualizing the experience so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. So moving on to this questionnaire, which we've only got one more sign left in the Venus season, which is crazy. But crazy. if you do have a Venus in Cancer, you do have another week or so to fill out that questionnaire. So please go fill that out. Um, and yeah, so the relationship values, top relationship values for Venus and Gemini, I have to say, I am pretty shocked. We've got, um, well, I guess I'm not shocked by honesty. Um, honesty is the top, top answer. Wow. And then the next two are reliability and compassion. Okay. Love this so much. Okay. Honesty being on the Gemini Sagittarius axis, like, again, like, I I just really, I can see it for Gemini because it's something they value in other people. And same with reliability. Like, I feel like that's yeah. something that Gemini being such a- Because it's not something such they a, bring to the table. Exactly. Like they are that flighty all over the place. And I just said the thing and I just went to the place and I'm just all over the place. So in a relationship, valuing when somebody is able to give them honesty and give them reliability, I actually love that so much. It's maybe surprising, but seeing it as what they're seeking as a complimentary, you know, part of a relationship, love. And of course, they're seeking the opposite, you know, like yeah. they want <laughs> something different. And I did also want to make a note of what was not ticked at all in all of the responses that we had. Courage, ambition, and spontaneity was not anybody's relationship values. Wow. Which I would say is quite surprising. Like those are things I would peg to air and fire qualities, which Gemini yeah. is compatible with. Courage ambition and spontaneity i mean they bring spontaneity yep but it's so interesting that courage and ambition i wouldn't put in a list of gemini qualities not that they can't be but i just wouldn't put that on a list so it's interesting that that's not even put it on a list of what gemini is against yeah no so yeah i just thought that was Interesting. interesting yeah Love language. What is the love language for a Venus in Gemini? We have a tie between quality time and acts of service, which similarly, I feel like the acts of service is because I don't have time to do this minutia. Yes. Like, can you, like, that's so much admin. If somebody else does that for me, love that. And quality time, I think, can encapsul- can be encapsulated by, like, good conversation. Yeah. Like, we want to have fun together. It's more fun yeah. if I'm doing something with other people. So, yes, let's let's be together. Yeah. I wanted to touch on why words of affirmation is so Same. low on this love language, too. <laughs> I think that's because Venus and Gemini knows how fleeting words can be. So yeah. they don't put too much weight on what people say, but more on how what they're doing. They can actually make Gemini feel something, yeah. like how they can make Gemini feel supported. Like that's a big deal for a Gemini to, uh, ex- to emote and then to like explore their emotions. And so to have somebody, you know, bring up emotions in that Venus and Gemini, like through quality time, through making them laugh, through making them feel loved, I think that it makes a lot of sense. Words are not weighty for Venus and Gemini or Gemini placements. Like words are very natural and they're like an obvious thing that's constantly, yeah. you know, going in and out and... I think for other placements that appreciate that words of affirmation is because they attach so much value to those Mm -hmm. words. Whereas we're talking Venus here, we're talking values. And if Gemini is already, you know, like you said, the words are fleeting. And so, but what's not fleeting is the fact that the dishes are done. Like that's, they're done. Like, (laughs) (laughs) and also like this adventure that we're on right now, these memories that I'm making right now with you, this like, time that I'm spending with you that is weighty and so Mm. I really that is so interesting because I was like wait words of affirmation isn't on there but at the same time I can see it because words are I don't want to say this for everybody because again your whole chart matters but like I would say a general statement is that words are easy for Gemini energy yeah and so like it's just not charming the words just come to them and so 
it's not as valuable when it's easy. It's not easy for them to stick around in one place and be reliable and do the thing that took time to do. So they're going to value that person who brings that to the table. Yeah. Yep. Moving on to their core values, we have got honesty again as the top answer. Someone wrote learning to feel my feelings, which I feel, I mean, that's Mm. beautifully put and kind of we touched on that sense of humor. Yes. And then someone put (laughs) common sense, which I love that for Gemini as as Gemini might not know everything, but Gemini knows how to find that out. Yes. So Gemini has the common sense to figure something out. Gemini doesn't have time for somebody to not have common sense. Like, yeah, that's yeah, that would that's frustration levels where it's like, yeah, you know, you should have if you didn't know that information. Why didn't you ask? Why didn't you look at it? Why didn't you like you just kept moving mm-hmm. on? What? Because their curiosity. <laughs> yeah, you were OK <laughs> not knowing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Creative activities, besides what I think would be a good one, which is a trivia night for a Venus and Gemini. Oh, yeah. Um, You know, you're with your favorite people and like you have a plethora of useless information. Creative activities for Venus and Gemini. uh, Top answer, of course, is writing. And then any sort of visual craft like painting, any sort of art, anything that's visually stimulating that stimulates the mind was up there. And then nature, which I think is I mean, that speaks on our just audience as well. I love that. I remember talking about Venus and Libra with all the craftiness and being like, I just need to hang out with some Venus and Libra people and craft. Yeah. Like, I love that. I think, well, I think Venus and Libra would stick with it more. I think Venus and Gemini would have like yeah. the craft cabinet and all the options yeah. and like, it's in there. We'll find it somewhere. Yeah. But they are, they would the be Venus great. Venus and Libra would be like, let me make sure you have everything you need. Oh, don't worry about me. Mine will get done. It'll get done when you leave. I'll do mine. Don't worry about it. Do you have everything you need? Like, that would be the Venus and Libra. And the Venus and Gemini is like, wait, this is a great idea. I have this and this. Well, we can't find this, but whatever. It's <laughs> like, I've we'll already done 10. Have you started yours yet? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Oh, man. Um, what they're most likely to overindulge in by a landslide, unhealthy foods. Like any sort of anything under that umbrella of unhealthy food was answered. That's funny. I'm here for that. Yeah. (laughs) And then style versus or style or aesthetic. We had a whopping individual slash unique. So I love love because it's like this great, like unique blend of all the different polar opposites you have in yourself. It's like that dichotomy of, you know, like how we were saying this truth exists. Man, we're like, of course, the words are coming out on the Gemini episode. (laughs) (laughs) Like this version of me and this version of me and they're opposites and they exist together so of course i'm unique because they're very cat dog oh my god yeah it is (laughs) living in a world with a little cat dog cat dog cat dog (laughs) dog. (laughs) okay okay (laughs) okay so and then i wanted to just touch on a couple of notes oh wait i did want to say we had a couple of write-ins specifically who made a note that their style or aesthetic is continually changing. So I wanted to make that note as well. Checks out. Yeah. Um, someone wrote like a beautiful, basically essay and I'm just, I'm just going to read that. So, Um, As for notes, anything extra you want us to know about your Venus and Gemini, I feel like my Venus and Gemini is often misunderstood as being the sign for cheating. This is not at all the case for me. I would very much like to find one partner for my life and have recently gotten out of a seven year relationship. Before that, I did date around a a lot, all kinds of people from all kinds of places. I think Venus and Gemini means that we are curious individuals. And of course, that translates to our love lives, too. If it is not the right fit, we will no longer be interested and move on. It's not about the variety for me, but about finding the right person who can appreciate and understand my multiple facets and interests and meet me there conversationally that is how I feel most known and appreciated and when my quirks are appreciated I also find that there's a certain way of conversation that people with this sign have genuine curiosity and excitement almost Uranian childlike humor a love for puns and wordplay in general great analytics and puzzle solvers I want someone alongside me to solve the puzzles of life together Hot damn. Like beautifully. I know. Written. It was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. Thank you for sharing with us. And of course, you're a Venus yeah. and Gemini. Oh my gosh. I love that. Yeah. And thanks it was for very those insights. Well put. Yeah. yeah. It was beautifully put. And it's so, I think it beautifully summarizes so much of what we were saying. Like, 
Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do seek stimulation, but I also seek companionship and partnership. And I love it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing. Wow. Yeah, kind of similar to how we discussed Venus and Aquarius friendship being a really important factor. I think that's the same here for Venus and yeah. Gemini. Like out of all the air signs, I think Libra's okay having the boundary of being like purely romantic. But both Gemini and Aquarius do kind of seek some of that platonic love as yes. well in their relationships. Yes. Oh, good point. You're so right. Yeah. So that's the questionnaire. Well, damn. I can't believe we're almost reaching the end of our Venus season. That's crazy. I know. It's crazy. I'm like really excited for the next one. But also, like this has been such a deep dive into Venus. So I love doing these because it just gives me so many insights to the people in my life. And then when I meet mm -hmm. people, it's like, oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> we, I, yeah. I know about Venus and Gemini. <laughs> like even yeah. if I know about it in, in like, you know, conceptually, I love hearing right. from people about their firsthand yeah. experience with it. That's fascinating. And then yeah. speaking of firsthand experience, you know, here's some celebrities who have. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest stars today. <laughs> Our guest stars are Margot <laughs> Robbie. We got well, Margot Robbie on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to run through these real quick. So four celebrities for with Venus and Gemini. We've got Margot Robbie, Sam Hewen. He's the one in Outlander. Um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Chris my Pratt. <laughs> Did you say my twin? Yes. On every like TikTok filter, <laughs> what celebrity do you look like? It's like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I'm pretty sure I've sent you that TikTok before. Yes, like, and yes. I'm literally in tears. And you're like, Mimi, you do not look like doing the wrong right <laughs> Okay, this is the new poll we'll be putting up on our Instagram. Check it out. <laughs> Does Mimi, yeah, for our 300th episode. <laughs> oh, oh, my man. gosh. Okay. Chris Pratt, Channing Tatum, Henry Cavill, oh. Kristen Bell, Amy Schumer, Rami Malek, Emma Thompson. Megan Fox, Heidi Klum, Cher, my number one, Sandra Bullock, Liam Neeson, Jennifer Garner, and Tina Fey. I feel like many of these female celebrities give that very airy beauty that Venus and Gemini, yeah. you know, like there is some sort of it's current. Not, yeah. And it's also not, I don't want to say ethereal, but it is somehow like... Gemini like rules the yeah like Gemini rules the arms and like that chest area yeah. and I feel like there's something about and Gemini energy especially Gemini risings tend to ha like be very mm -hmm. like limbs like that's just something that we notice like you know with their like yeah. arms and legs is just something we notice about them and so I feel like these Venus Gemini at least the 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 women that I went over I'm just I feel like I see a connection with these celebrities where okay I get that 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 Venusian energy they bring is you're right though it is current and there is a I don't know a youthfulness to it yeah yeah youthfulness that's great yeah so just a reminder too that if you have a Venus in Gemini you can only have an Aries sun Taurus sun Gemini sun Cancer sun or Leo sun only two signs before Gemini or two signs after yeah and just wanted to mention that yeah. And I, as I was going over these celebrities, I was like, oh, wait, what's her sun sign? What's her sun sign? OK, OK, OK. Yeah, Just like right. <laughs> <laughs> confirming. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that there we have it for our Gemini Venus. Thank you for everybody who contributed to our questionnaire. The penultimate Venus episode. Penultimate? Yeah. Second to last. You're right. Now I'm just every time, about words. Every I time I hear that word. that word, I get excited by it, forget what it means, and then get re-excited by it. Every time. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, all righty well happy gemini season enjoy the airy end of spring energy and yeah we'll be back with our last venus episode venus and cancer in a month's time so for now mimi why do we talk about gemini venus today because mm, the stars made us do it <laughs>